You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. This is a nice book. The LSB, Lutheran Service book. It has so many different hymns in it. You have hymns, the Redeemer section, you have the Easter section, you have the Christmas section, the Lent section. You always have to say Lent in a dreary way, right? Because that's what Lent's all about. But one of my favorite sections, I'd say it's in the top 30, is the Confession Absolution. Not many hymns in this section, but some really good ones. So what I wanted to do is walk through a few of them with you. So today we're going to focus on Luther's catechetical hymn, on confession and absolution is the first hymn. No, it's not the first. Silly Chris, I was wrong. It's the second one. Hymn 607, From Depths of Woe I Cry to Thee, which is Luther's, like I said, catechetical hymn, but he bases it on Psalm 130. Now I'm going to read to you. I would sing, but I'm kind of pitchy sometimes. So I'm just going to read to you from probably, I would say my favorite verse from here, which is actually the last Stanza, not verse, it stands as, oh, silly Chris. Though great our sins, yet greater still is God's abundant favor. His hand of mercy never will abandon us nor waver. Our shepherd, good and true, is he who will at last is Israel free from all their sin and sorrow. You look at this hymn, and it's carrying you through what confession and absolution is all about. From the depths of woe, meaning from the burden of our guilt, from the depths of our despair, we are brought by the Holy Spirit to confess our sin. And it doesn't matter. That's the point of stanza five. Though great our sin, greater still is God's favor toward you. There isn't a sin that Jesus does not forgive. There isn't a sin that when you confess it to the pastor in private confession, he goes, oh, I'm sorry. I just looked at the updated document here, and Jesus says that's one that can't be forgiven. Now, no. It doesn't matter what it is. His mercy and grace always trump your depravity. Your sin is never going to be so big and great that it cannot be forgiven by the death of Jesus on the cross. Though great your sin, yet greater still is his abundant favor. And it's not going to waver. That's the point. It's not going to change. It's not like today Jesus forgives you, next month he doesn't. It never changes. His mercy for you is the same every day and is renewed every morning for you. So I encourage you, sing him 607, 607, whichever you want to say, in LSB. You'll be blessed for it because it assures you of Jesus's unwavering love and favor for you. God bless y'all. See you next time. Bye-bye.